Insidious, the red door is directed by Patrick Wilson. This is his first time behind the camera. And this film sees the return of the Lambert family, primarily Dalton and Josh. Dalton's at college when he comes in contact with beings from the further once again. And Josh, who's now separated from his family, is trying to decipher memories from his past that are still haunting him. The Insidious franchise is interesting because I love the first movie. I thought it was very scary. I enjoyed the second film as well. The third film directed by Lee Wannell before he made The Invisible Man was also surprisingly pretty good. And Insidious, the last key I think is totally okay. It's not a great horror film by any means, but there has yet to be a very bad Insidious film. We are five films into this franchise, and even though this film did not get the best reviews, I really didn't think I'd be talking about it to be honest. I figured that I would just see it and move on. But I found a surprising amount of merit to the film, and I do think that critics are being a little harsh on it. The Insidious movies are famous for having some really good jump scares. The first one especially has a few all-timers. James Wan's very good at them. He's one of the few directors that I think understands the art form of the jump scare and how to achieve it. Usually I'm not a big fan of jump scares, and I find them very cheap. And The Red Door has at least two that I found fantastic. One of them in an art class, and the second being a scene when Josh is receiving an MRI. And I do think that it's maybe the best scene in the film in regards to scares. I felt claustrophobic. I felt very tense. It was really well done. But what Patrick Wilson has done with the movie that I found impressive is kind of back away a bit from the idea of jump scare over and over again. There was plenty in the movie, but he does take a surprising amount of time to sit with characters in emotional moments. And you're warned of that pretty early on in the movie, where he's sitting in his car texting his son, and we mostly remain in a lockdown shot for like a minute or so. And eventually, some things are happening behind him that are of interest, but you're sitting with him in his car while he's texting his son for a while, and Wilson is kind of letting you know that the movie is going to take its time with some of its characters and allow you to have some of those breather moments. It's not just about the haunted house scare factory that some of the other films are. And not that that makes this movie any better. I do have a lot of issues with the film, and I found it to be mostly a enjoyable, competent horror movie. It's by no means great. I don't think it's the best Insidious film. I think I liked it more than The Last Key, but the first three I find better than this. So I'm just gonna get the one thing that kinda bothered me as I watched the movie out of the way first. And that's that you're spending a lot of the movie waiting for Josh and Dalton to catch up with us. Because we know what happened to them. We saw Insidious 1 and Insidious 2. We know that these beings from the further affected them in a very negative way. And they all tried to kill each other. We saw that happen. They don't remember that. And so they spend most of the movie trying to figure out what these memories are. Did they really happen or not? In some ways, it provides the movie's greatest strength, which I'll talk about in a second, but in other ways, we're sort of like, come on, guys. Let's go. We know we know this. We know this, and we're watching other people inform them of things that we already know, because that's how they figure things out. And sometimes that can be a detriment to the film, because we feel like we know more than the protagonists do. Sometimes that's a great thing in horror, though, when the audience is let in a little bit, and then we feel suspense. We feel tension because we know something they don't know, and we're like, don't go in the basement, don't open that door, he's right behind you, that kind of thing. But it's not really like that here. It's very important character knowledge, revelatory stuff that we know that they don't. It takes a while for them to figure shit out, and we're kind of just waiting for that to happen. But I said it also provides the movie's greatest strength. Because I think one of the most beautiful things about this movie that's going on not just for Dalton, 
but for Josh as well, because he's remembering how he had a deadbeat dad who left them and abandoned them. And Dalton's relationship with his father, Josh, is awful. Their family's all split up and people aren't really talking to each other, and they don't really know why. We know Insidious Chapter 2 happened, but they don't. So they're sort of mixed up on it. Their idea of why their family isn't working is very different from ours. But I have to skirt around some details here due to spoilers. But I think it leads to some of the film's most beautiful moments when it comes to understanding generational trauma and also what you might think of a parent and what you may have thought they were like and understanding certain things that you maybe never knew before. And because of that, Insidious V, I think, has at least two of my favorite character moments in the entire franchise. Even though it's at the expense of some clunky storytelling, some poor staging with actors, the blocking of some scenes felt a little awkward, and there was some dialogue choices that felt very obvious to me. There's a line where Dalton refers to his brother as a little brother, but it's not in like an affectionate way. It was just sort of like on the phone and it felt like, yeah, I mean, I know, I know they're brothers, like I saw the other movies, and it felt like they were reminding me. There's moments like that in the movie too. And while Patrick Wilson doesn't do anything mind-blowing behind the camera, I think that what he did with the human side of this movie and focusing on the father-son dynamic and also having a few very effective scares in the movie really worked in this film's favor. There's some aspects involving college in a frat house that feel sort of like extra baggage that doesn't really belong in the movie. And I think that Patrick Wilson had his head in the right place with this movie. And while it's not a great film, I think it's a totally competent horror movie. I still think there's not a bad insidious movie, and I think that critics are being unduly harsh on it. Maybe check it out in a matinee. I do think it's worth seeing. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.